Hey everybody, I'm Jen. Hello, Renee here, and we're talking about what we spend our money on. Yeah, and it's the Doritos version today. Renee loves Doritos, and that is one of his indulgences. So. Can we say that on this thing? Can we say the word? Well, Doritos? we're not getting paid for it. It is what you like. Okay, fine. <laughs> but we wanted to talk today about what we spend our money on and what we are trying not to spend our money on during an economic downturn. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> I guess this is why people don't eat on camera because they don't have to worry about swallowing out their mouths full. But hey, you know, just pretend like you're at the dinner table with us, which this is our dinner table, and you can join us for a meal and a discussion and let's talk about money and marriage plus business. So, what is going on is the economy is not so great and we are adjusting to it and that's fine. There's no complaints here. We're actually motivated to save our money because we want to have a cushion in case something major happens, right? Um, we've already gone through COVID, still going through it. Um, various things are going on in the year of 2020 and it is, it is, uh, an economic wake-up call. So basically, what is it that we bought? Yeah, what do we, we buy? buy? You gotta buy food. So if you're like in the food, uh, well, before I say this, not food service, because that's something different, but like if you're a grocery store or some kind of, uh, you know, big box supermarket or whatnot, yeah, food's gonna be at the top because you gotta eat, right? So People have to eat. And with that comes uh, cooking and uh, cooking your own food and maybe buying things that you normally wouldn't like. For us, buying at-home ready-made meals that require minimal preparation mm -hmm. has just been like a real money saver. Yeah. So we are able to buy foods that simulate, simulate some of our favorite going out places, restaurants, Indian, Italian, Thai. And, uh, Thai. Oh, that's right. Thai. Yeah. Well, is there Thai food that we buy? Well, sort of. Best package. Like the oca Thai? occasional sauce or whatever. But yeah, there's a lot of... So here's, here's kind of our journey, right? Prior to any economic downturn, our typical way of life, even after Renee started working from home and we were on a smaller budget, but you know, we just, we didn't, like, we didn't we didn't count the dollars spent on our food consumption when times were good. We would just go for what we're in the mood for. So if we wanted pizza, we'd go get pizza. If we wanted to eat out three meals a day, we'd do that. My family teased me mercilessly on it, but I am not a cook and I do not enjoy time in the kitchen. I love running our business and I love eating and I love supporting restaurants that do a much better job than I do. So I am one of those people that resists cooking. However, when we are in economic challenge, economically challenging times and restaurants are not as open as they often were because you have to either take out or their hours are reduced or what have you, there is just more cooking at home. And yesterday we had your brothers visiting and we were talking about the small incremental differences and in how we look at money and how we look at different things that we spend on from say March of 2020 to August of 2020. I have noticed in myself a lot of different awarenesses about money. So for example, a couple days ago over the weekend, we went to Lover's Point in Pacific Grove. We went to the grill, the PG grill, which is right there on the beach. It's cash only, it's got burgers, it's got soft serve ice cream, it's got Coke floats, it's got chili dogs, it's got all kinds of yummy stuff. And we, Renee had a hankering for a chili dog. So I was right. looking at the menu and for the, for the first time really, I was looking at the menu and the prices because I really haven't cared about prices, but as things are getting more expensive and, and we're being more conservative and trying to to save more money, I was like, wow, $5.50 for a Coke float. That's a really 
high margin of profit. Okay. And I still got it. I didn't deny myself that, but we are trying to make sure that we don't exceed $900 per month on food. We're trying to stay within a budget. And what are we doing with the extra money? We're actually trying to save it for a rainy day or invest it. So it's not like we really are going hungry. We're really, what we're doing is we're playing a game of how much can we save? And for all of you people who are cooks, when I share with you what we spent today when we went to Smart and Final, I'm sure you're gonna scoff at me like, ah, why are you getting all that prepackaged food? It's so much easier to make it on your own. But you have to understand, I want food ready to eat within 15 minutes. I don't have the patience or the time or the desire to take longer than 15 minutes to prepare a meal. And if it is gonna take a couple hours, it's because it's a frozen lasagna in the oven for that long. And it, you know, I didn't have to do all the work, right? <laughs> so, so that's what I've been noticing about my own perception of money and food and, and the things that we spend. What are some of the things that you're allowing yourself to spend on and not? I don't really, I don't really buy much. Quite honestly, I don't. I think even when I was working, I bought, um, really, I mean, we've kind of, I wouldn't say shared the expenses like for food. I mean, there was times when like I would go out and I would buy the food and there's times when, you know, Jen buys the food. But when I'm like in this mode right now, trying to save, which you know, I honestly, I do try to save, but it, I, I can't really save right now. So I'm just really paying what I can pay, which is like rent and um, uh, uh, health insurance uh, and a couple of other you know, miscellaneous things, uh, which aren't so miscellaneous, like the phone bill uh, and other little things here and there that come up. But for like myself, really, because of what it is that I do, I have software that I got to pay for. I have website hosting that I pay for. Advertising. Advertising here and there, not Infusion so soft. much. Yeah. Oh, for you, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of software costs for our business that we do have to spend money on. So that's where our money is spent. In fact, tell them what we got yesterday in the in the delivery. We got an Oculus, um, one of those Oculus, I think it's called the Quest uh, gaming VR headsets. Headset. So that's more of a, it's more of like a entertainment item, gaming thing but like but not because we're gamers it's actually a work it's a work expense because we're doing marketing for a gaming company and we have to test out the game so we're really not the typical gamers so that's actually a business write-off <laughs> right yeah but you sure had fun playing that thing last I had night fun playing with it i mean i have played games before with my nintendo or playstation so i'm familiar with all that and it was fun to play it and there's always that initial excitement to play those kind of games because it's so brand new and fresh, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what it was. Um, but for me, kind of getting back to what it is that I do, like like I generally don't spend a lot of money on, on stuff just in general, like clothing uh, or shoes. And from working from home, you know, I don't have a fuel bill. I don't actually remember the last time I put gas in my car since I've been working from home. Definitely since COVID, I don't think I've, put any gas in my car. And what that means is I guess there's been a quarter tank sitting in my car the whole time. I've driven my car maybe once or twice a week. Once every once or once every one or two weeks, I should say. So, uh, but it's all been in town driving. So there's a lot I'm saving on just by matter of working from home. But when it comes to expenses, like for me, everything is kind of going back into either the work I do for graphic design or art but then also for my my art that I'm work that I'm selling online, and so with that, I would say the biggest expense is really like my website hosting. And um, you wouldn't think that you would need something because uh, if you're at all into building websites or you know, then you you know probably more than I do. But if you've dabbled in website design, you're like, oh yeah, I can get a website, I can get some hosting. Well, I've been kind of dabbling for 13 years in website design, and I only recently learned, like, if you're going to build an online store, which is what I have, I have a lot of images, a lot of pages. Like, you actually have to consider different hosting options other than, like, you know, 
$9.99 a, year, a month for hosting or, or less like there's like you can get $2.79 a month to host a website but you know I use GoDaddy some people love them some people hate them um, I've been with them that whole 13 years and I've not had any issues with them and like I recently upgraded my website reneariola.com to a business hosting and that is I think $19.99 a month uh, which is the most I've ever paid for hosting and that kind of is a lot but what they explained to me was you're gonna have more dedicated resources to your store which means you can upload more files you can handle more traffic you can also um, with that comes added resources I should say uh, uh, options that allow the site to run smoother so as an expense, like I would say this is my, my biggest expense because it's a monthly thing when it comes to like the business aspect of my business, of my website, is there's malware removal, scanning, there is the firewall, and all that is like an add-on that costs more. Now this is all part of that bundle, but it's, it's, it essentially is just an expense that if I look at it, it's 20 bucks a month that provides me like all the services I need to once the business takes off to really just be set up and preparing and positioning my my own resources that I use to help create and move and sell and display my art in such a way that that's money well spent toward that even though yeah 20 bucks is 20 bucks and like that to me that's a lot of money um, but it's not so much that I can't see the value in putting it into that investment for my business so that that's a big one and you know I can manage that but outside of that you know I don't <laughs> I wouldn't normally go out and buy an oculus um, I mean I've, I've, luckily you know the company pays for it so that's a good thing but you know it's still it's still a, an expense and it's still whether it's it's a write-off or not that money's got to come from somewhere <laughs> yeah so yeah when you pull it it's from true. one account or another it's true it still costs so I think we're fortunate to where we do work from home, but even we can feel, you know, yeah. the, the strains when it comes to the costs of things. And I think that's just, that's just- It's just how it is it right is now. It is how it is. I mean, the it's supply not, chain it's, it's, is- It's gonna is happen, it's affected. a cause and effect thing. Right? It is a cause and effect thing. And we're not, we're not complaining about the cost of things. That's not what it is. It's just, what it is is it's more of an awareness. It's more of awareness. like. We went to one of our favorite restaurants. We love their burgers. And I know you can go to a fast food joint and get a burger, but this place is like, you know, half pound, really nice beef cheeseburger, it all slabs of bacon. Like it's it's like a British pub style burger. It's fantastic with the thick fries. Like it's it's restaurant, you know, pub style burger. We each had a cheeseburger with bacon. I had fries, he had a salad, and we had sticky toffee pudding. And it was just glorious British pub food, like really, really good food, fantastic. And we're not complaining at all. But when I looked at the bill, when you factor in the tax and the tip, it was just like, wow, this is a $45 meal. Like, oof. And it makes me think, could we start making hamburgers at home? Would they be as good? Would they be as convenient? Would that sticky toffee pudding be as fabulous so, if so, I made it? So tip number one, use coupons if you can. <laughs> well, this place doesn't have coupons, but you're right. Like you, we can save money. We can save money. And by it's using true. Coupons. I think I brought this up before, but like I, you know, I like going out for fast food when, I mean, obviously fast food is convenient. It's not the best, but like if you're going to do it, like if you have coupons, why not? Like I like, we get in these mailers, uh, coupons in the mail, and like it's like a whole sheet of them. We've all seen them, right? Whether you like whatever. It's KFC pizza, or Carl's whatever. Jr. Or... And I use these coupons. I've used them, and I will buy like two for one, you know? And like you just, I just adjust to that, you know? Like mm -hmm. I'll eat one one day, and the next day I'll have it. And if I have to heat it up, I'll pull it apart. I'll, I'll pull out the, the, the tomato and the, the lettuce, and you know, I'll, I'll warm up the bun and the, and the, the patty. And then I'll put the tomato back in the lettuce and like it's the best of oh wow so it'll it'll save some money there so yeah. I don't know how many people do that kind of thing I mean we make I make use of that personally 
I like I have no problem. I always say this. I could like live on Subway every day. Like I kid you not. I can't. Like it's like such you, good food to me. It's I like, know. And you know for me I get bored with the same stuff and that's one of the reasons why I've always loved going out to eat. I love eating food from around the world. And I recognize that if I were to have in the kitchen all of the things that I love to eat, I would need a ton of different spices, I would need recipe books, and I would need the time to do it all. I just don't have the time to do it all. We're lucky if we can squeeze in 20 minutes to eat something. And when we do have dinner and we're sitting here at the table and we're watching YouTube, it's I want to I want to just watch YouTube and, and eat and not have to worry about like you know I, I tend to be that one pot cook if it if it goes in one pot I'll make it if it requires multiple pots it's not it's not something I want to do but so tip number two <laughs> cook everything in one pot that's <laughs> what we do like <laughs> like well you know we have our our favorite meals that we like to cook but like it's so true like. It saves time. I mean, if there's something you can cook all, you know, all, all in all one, one pot, one big old goulash or whatever. Like I'm for that. Like we're not going to starve. No. Uh, the experience no. of going out and dining is so different now. Even though there's a lot of uh, opinions on, on the best way to do that, given the time, it's also a matter of like how do you feel dining and eating outside, which is we, we where we live. It's you know. It's common to do that if the weather's nice, and generally it is, but then what happens when it starts raining? How are those restaurants gonna fare? Probably goes just to straight up takeout, which is always available, especially since, you know, since COVID. But um, the tip of like cooking in, like for us, it's a time saver to pick meals that we're able to just kind of put all together. in one shot. Like a favorite meal is like uh, ground beef, a rice cauliflower and some kind of tomato sauce and like that makes a pretty good uh, pretty good hearty meal we find and then what I've been doing recently is taking like sourdough bread toasting that up uh, I don't put butter on I generally don't put any kind of condiment or butter or whatnot if I'm having it with like a meal I will have toast in the morning by itself and I'll butter it up and put a bunch of sea salt on it but for for dinner when we cook a meal like that we're because the bread is filling I'm able to, we're able to get like two meals out of that one cook, uh, that one meal we've cooked that evening. Mm -hmm. So like, there's like, you know, tip 2.A, leftovers, leftovers rock. Yeah, leftovers are good. And it is just interesting, right? Because if you would talk to me, like if I could take myself back to like February of 2020 and like, guess what kind of life you're going to be living, Jen? I'd be like, really? I always eat out. I never cook in. Well, you know what? Times have changed. And you know, even go to, to Smart and Final. We like to go to Smart and Final and we like to go to Trader Joe's because Trader Joe's has the best prepackaged foods. And Smart and Final, we ha we love the brands that are there and we love the prices. And normally, I don't know if you guys have this situation. It's just the two of us. So when the cupboards are bare and we don't have much, we'll have the expensive shopping week and then the following week we'll have, you know, less need to stock up because we still have a good, a good uh, assortment of things from the prior week. So there's the expensive week and then the less expensive week. Then go back to the expensive week, then the less expensive week. That seems to be how it is. So today was one of those less expensives, but it was still expensive. I mean, we got, here's what we got. Uh, kettle, cor a kettle light salt chips, Doritos, party size. Um, uh, a bird's eye uh, stir fry rice mix with vegetables, a couple bags of those. Pop secret popcorn. We got a big old lasagna, Stufer's lasagna with meat, which by the way, gives three us meals. each three meals, which is like it serves 12, but you know, we each, each serving is really uh, two for us, but like it's so good. Dryer sheets, okay, wow, the dryer sheets were $6.19, that was unexpected. Some grapes, Oregon chai, like I don't go out to Starbucks uh, very often. We usually go to The Boys, which is Cannery Road Deli. Those are good friends of ours, they're like family to us, and I will go spend money on their Mexican coffee or their soy chai lattes or their 
Mexican hot chocolates because we love them and they're good friends of ours and I want to support them. But yeah, I am enjoying the savings of having the, the Oregon chai mix. Eggs, Cozy Shack tapioca pudding because that's indulgent, a couple of pears, a bunch of bananas, that Wallaby Van yogurt that you like. I like, like that. That's vanilla bean yogurt. It's a, it's what a is it, Austra Australian Greek style yogurt? Is it's that really what that good. Is? I really enjoy it. Yeah. Got a bag of Fuji apples, got some Triscuit crackers, and two spreadable challenge butters because I just love that whipped spreadable butter. And I got two of them because I tend to be uh, generous with my, with my butter spreading on the toast. But yeah, I mean, that really wasn't that much. And we're, again, we're not complaining. We're not going hungry. But when I got the bill and it was $82 and 41 cents, it's like, wow, the prices really are going up because typically we would, we would spend like 50 bucks or maybe at the, at the most $70 on this kind of stuff just, you know, a month ago. So I am seeing that prices are increasing. It's like, well, that makes sense. The, the supply chain is interrupted. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on as far as uh, expense of making the food and transporting the food and and the safety of the people. It's it's just one of those things, but it's like wow. So tip number three is this: when you're when you're mindful and you're looking at your costs closely and you're cutting your expenses, what you do is you take those savings and you stash them into something that is going to make you more money. So we're saving it so we can have uh, the down payment for a new rental property, or um, it's just sitting there as a cushion right now, the money that I'm saving. And quite frankly, if that needs to be the emergency fund that I need, if something else happens with the economy and I need to pay my employees, then I'll use that. But I'd prefer to save that for the down payment on our next rental property. So again, we're doing this because we want to save, we want to be mindful, and we want to really stash away a lot of money so we can have a cushion in case something were to happen. Because with our situation, we are self-employed, we don't have anyone else paying our medical bills. We have health coverage. We are with Blue Shield and we're here in California and we really don't have expensive fancy plans, but it is an HSA plan and we have, I don't know, the bronze plan. It's not even a gold or a silver, it's like bronze and it's, it allows me to have my prescriptions and it allows me to be a PPO so I can choose my doctors but it's still a $12,000 deductible. And if we were to get sick, I would not want our deductible or our medical bills to wipe us out. So we are staying home to be safe and to be healthy and we're socking away our money because quite frankly, who knows what's gonna happen, but we're doing what we can to prepare. So that is our topic for today, money, what we're spending on, what we're not spending on. We are spending it on a lot of software. We're spending it on investing it back into our business. Yeah. 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 And the thing with software, if you're not aware, is that like everything has gone to a monthly subscription fee base. Or annual. Or annual. You save some money if you pay the annual yeah. fee. Yeah, so it's like having software nowadays is it's, it's, it's like a food bill, you know. It's essential. Month. It doesn't yeah, go away. Every month, it's something. Yeah, so especially. It, it, counts, it counts as part of that. Oh, yeah. The software that I'm, I'm spending money on is, is, is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Because so. we're, we're, you know, having online courses, Infusionsoft, um, you know, CRM, uh, all kinds of stuff. But there's also a lot of free software that we're using, too. Yay, Google Docs. Love you, Google Docs. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to see what it's like for us as a married couple working from home in August of 2020. I think you're going to make this evergreen. I was going to make this evergreen, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. Here's a Dorito. <laughs> see you guys next time. Thanks for hanging out with us and have a wonderful day. See you later. Bye.